Hello, global audience, and welcome to the pilot episode of The Raw Take, the podcast where we'll be discussing all things sport in an unbiased, open, and frank manner. Now, sport. Obviously, football is the number one sport in the world. You cannot even question that. And last year, me, along with millions of Russians and thousands and thousands and thousands of people from all across the world, we all lived through a period of absolute magic. Of course, I'm talking about the 2018 World Cup in my home country, Russia. Tens of thousands in the streets, tens of thousands in the stands, enjoying the feast of football, the atmosphere in the streets, the wild parties everywhere across the 11 host cities. On the pitch, it was obviously fireworks as well. And I'm not talking about the fireworks after the final at Luzhniki, which nobody could see because of the heavy rain, the first rain during the World Cup, actually. Nevertheless, two teams made it to the final, Croatia and France. France were the heavy favorites to win the World Cup. Croatia were considered by many as underdogs. For a long time, I've considered talking to representatives of these footballing nations on how their teams got there and what was their impression. And today, thankfully, I have a chance to do so. So, two fantastic guests representing their nations today with me. Stipe Plitikosa of Croatia, obviously. Ibrahimba of France. These gentlemen do not need any introduction. You all know them. Superstars of football. Guys, want to talk about the final. Um, I can understand how frustrated you were. I can understand how happy you were. But just a question first to both of you. Was that the best final you've seen? Well, it was for sure one of the best because of the emotions I felt during the watching the game. But uh, even after the game, when I came into the dressing room of the, our football team, uh, they were so disappointed because I, they, they, they think and I think it was one of the, our best performances during the World Cup. And they were so sorry, they, they, of course they didn't win, but they were so sorry because they were, um, uh, uh, they were in the trap which was uh, created by the French team because they, they, they took initiative to with possession the game and the French team was, you know, playing in a medium block and coming out very strongly from, from the block. And, and, and that is, from the plan of tactic, they were really a bit of disappointed because, you know, we are a very emotional team. We play with a huge emotions. I think that is why the, 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 the people liked us during the World Cup. And, and, and they were so sorry because of that, uh, 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 relying so much on the emotions instead of maybe tactics, yeah. Ibrahim? Well, I think he's right, but uh, you know, at the end, um, I think what make the difference is probably I think it was the condition, the physical condition, yeah. at the end. Because uh, when we look what happened, uh, Croatia had played more times and more minutes than French team, you know. And so at the end, like you said, of course, uh, you know, game is tactic. Is sometimes you know you have to be able to understand what's going on, you know, against your uh, opponent. So, and at the end. Friends get in because, like we said before, uh, you know, a team was a little bit tired, and you know, um, and you get one goal, and that thing changed everything. Yeah, Luca, for example, after the game, Modric said to me, oh, "We should play like friends, you know, like they were doing. You know, it will be maybe maybe easier for us, you know, because all of this what Ibrahim was saying, you know. So uh, it's frustrating, you know, because you were so close, but you know, you have to admit it that uh, the friends." was the better team that day, you know. It's about scoring goals, yeah. But if we go back to the days before the World Cup, I spoke with Nico Krancher, your yeah. former teammate, yeah. excellent player. He was jolly standing there with a, with a, with a glass in his hand and he said, you know what, Croatia is going to be in the final. I was like, come on, Nico. I mean, I love Croatia. It's a great team, great football. They have the spirit. But seriously, no one expected Croatia to be there. Did you expect Croatia to be no, in the final? No, of course not. But because, you know, the, the, the way we qualified, you know, it was really, you know, very, very, very tight, you know. And uh, most important for us, what we were all, all, everybody in Croatia was saying, and from my perspective as a, as a former uh, player, was to win the first game. And when we win the first game, then the atmosphere goes, you know, by itself, you know, and the, and the players become uh, very compact. And, you know, when you are uh, on a big competition and you have a group of 23 players and also 
25 maybe people who are around them. You know, you have to create a, a, a really good atmosphere, you know, uh, because you are traveling a lot and then uh, you don't sleep enough after the game. And, and, and the, the atmosphere is what's holding you, you know. And, and there were some players, you know, like Chorluca, you know, who lost his place and he's like a, a, a senior player in the team. And he was so, after that game, I think so uh, supporting to the, towards the player who were playing. And that atmosphere was, uh, I think, the main key which, which held us and lead us to the, to, the, to the final, yeah. I think it wasn't even about the first game uh, where everybody's jaws dropped on the floor, but the second game, I guess, Argentina, but we'll touch upon that later. Yeah. I just want to yeah, sort of yeah, ping pong the question to Ibrahim now. France was touted as one of the favorites before the World Cup. I have to say, I even tweeted before the World Cup, we had a, like a prediction game, I said France will win it, guys, without question. Did you have the feeling that France will go all the way and raise the cup? No, to be honest, no, because uh, if we look what happened uh, the first game against Australia, uh, it, was a, it, was not a, it was not a good game from France and uh, the, the coach also said and uh, afterward he did some changement because uh, normally if we look at the team, Dembele was supposed to play and he played that game but then uh, it was not a great game from the uh, French national team because young players and uh, you know, the, the pressure was there. And uh, after that, he changed it and uh, he decided to play different ways. And I believe that's, that makes the friends go through, you know. And if you look what's happening, um, it was more like defending and counter-attacks. And of course, we have uh, Mbappe that everybody knows I've seen during the World Cup. And I think that made the change uh, for the France to go to the, to the final and to win the World Cup. Do you think Killian was instrumental in, in many ways? Because I was at the Argentina game where Argentina was doing very well. They went ahead. And then we remember Pavard's yeah. Yeah. crazy goal, right? But Kylian Mbappe just literally destroyed Argentina in seven minutes. Do you think overall he was the guy who took France to the final and won it? What made the difference for France, I believe, before any other Thing before Mbappe was the midfield. Um, Pogba and Kante, because if you look about what happened during the World Cup with those two guys, they were, they were working very well. And obviously, you know, when you have uh, quality players like Mbappe, and then they can, they can make the differences. Griezmann comes in, make the differences. This is what happened. Now, uh, like you say, uh, if Pogba don't score that goal, who knows what's going to happen? You That's know what I mean? Who knows <laughs> yeah. what's going to happen? At the end, you know it. Uh, football is also sometimes, and I think most of the time, no. you need to, to, be, to have that luck, you know? And we have that luck. And I think now even more than, than, than before, you know? Because I think you don't have so much quality players in, in every nation like it was before, you know? And I think Luka Modric is the best example. You have the guy who is shooting the penalty in the last minutes against Denmark, and Schmeichel saves the penalty, and then you have uh, penalty kicks, and then I think it was like two centimeters, he, he, the ball passed away from the Schmeichel's feet. And from that moment, he could be a most tragical person in the history of the World Cup. And he came like the best player in the world and he won all these uh, awards, you know, during the year. Yeah. You got to have big, uh, as they say in Spain, cojones to be able to... <laughs> <laughs> right? So that, that's good for Luca. Uh, Stipa, a question to you. Um, the first game against Nigeria. Good game, solid, very, very impressive performance by Croatia. But honestly, myself and many others I know, uh, rooting for Croatia from the very beginning, were absolutely wowed by the second game, Argentina. I mean, this is Argentina, this is not a joke. That is why I always say about this luck, you know, because until the 60th minute, I think we scored the first goal of 56, I don't remember. Uh, the game was like uh, even, you know, 50-50. And then the goalkeeper made like a small mistake and the Rebic, you know, when I saw this ball going up in the air, I said, oh, he, I, I was just begging, he doesn't, he doesn't shoot the ball, you know, and he shot it from the volley and, 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 and put it in the top corner. It was fantastic, you know, but I'd say, you know, this is the this small things during the today's football, modern football, with, which makes a big change, you know, and that is, I think the, the, that goal was the uh, uh, first, uh, moment when I thought that we can do something big on this World Cup. Yeah. Right, this is what I wanted to ask. So you started believing after, after Yeah, that after that goal. After that goal, yeah. Fantastic. You also mentioned the, the penalty saved by uh, Schmeichel at the Denmark game. Yeah. 
What do you think about the Croatian goalkeeper? How did he do over the, over the tournament? Oh, he was fantastic, he was brilliant. When you have the goalkeeper who saves three penalties against Denmark, one against uh, Russia in very intensive and also emotional game, then uh, you have to pay credits and also, which uh, the people uh, still don't remember it well, the save against Harry Kane uh, when uh, they were leading, I think, 1-0. They were 1-0 they were one nil up, yeah. And uh, he made a fantastic save, and I think that save uh, led us to the final. Even though I think he had some problems, he was struggling with, with, with the injuries and everything, but just, I think, he didn't have enough luck in, 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 in the final game, yeah. Well, we'll definitely get to that. Uh, let's go back to France. So, France qualifies from the group, maybe a very slow start, um, and then absolute annihilation of Argentina, that beautiful game we spoke about. But then there was a game against Belgium in the semi-finals. I remember there was a lot of criticism saying France is sort of like sucking life out of football. They drained a very fluid and beautiful uh, Belgian side. Do you think that was a fair assessment? Or, after all, this is the World Cup and whatever means necessary to get you to the final. Do you think France did the right thing? Listen, I, I had played football. He had played football. So we know what does that mean to being in the top and to be in the highest level. Football sometimes you win games, playing good, playing bad sometimes also. So you have to be able to understand when it's time to play and to win or just to make fun. So this is the things. And that the game, which is true, Belgium trying to play better, but at the end, the result what we're talking about today is like France win the World Cup. This is what happened. So, uh, after anyone can say whatever they want, uh, but if we look what's going on about Belgium, because you're telling me about Belgium, when it was the last time they, they win the, uh, something, you know what I mean? So, you have to understand also and great players. We don't talk about the players, we don't have a doubt about it. Uh, Lukaku, Hazard, and and Dembele and others and others, but at the end, results have to come and France bring it. So, yeah, I'm sorry for, uh, for Belgium, but they have to also think about it. Maybe sometimes it's not always like, you know, playing fun and you have to be able to, to kill the game, yeah. you know, it's a mentality. Yeah. What was the moment when you believed? Stipe mentioned he started believing when Ante Rebic's goal went in. What was the moment when you believed that France will win it? Well, it's a funny thing because at the end we have the same uh, history because at the end, if we look what happened with France, it's the same thing what happened to, 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 to Croatia, it's against Argentina. Everything comes through to Argentina. If Pavar don't make that goal, because for a defender, let's say it should, it's just, you know, you take it, if, if you take it 10 times, maybe, maybe it's going to be like two, three times, you know what I mean? So that, that goal makes the differences. And we say, it, you know, you have to be lucky also. You have to be lucky. Uh, anything can happen during the World Cup, but you have to be able to have, uh, you know, th those players, maybe 20, 21, 23, to be there at any time because somebody can uh, get injured, somebody can uh, get a suspension. So you have to be able to, to, to get all the players to be ready for any moment during the World Cup. Could not agree more with yeah. what you said. Um, let's go back to Croatia. You played in Russia. You are fondly loved still by the Spartak Moscow fans. And there were guys with the yeah. scars around there. Yeah. Croatia, Russia. That game went into penalties. And I'll, I'll tell you honestly, I was actually supporting Croatia, even though I'm Russian. <laughs> are they recording this? Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. It has to be honest. Be right? careful when you get no, out no, from the other. Yeah. Right. Uh, the reason being is that I didn't want the Russia-England semi-final because it would have been way too toxic and everything yeah, political, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I thought Croatia is my team and they yeah. need to go. But when the second went in from Mario Fernandez and it went into penalty, I was like, what, what, what's going on? Holy crap, is it, is it really going to happen? I mean, this country will explode. Your emotions at that moment, when it went into penalties, you're the goalkeeper, you know how hard it is. Yeah, but I was, I, was, I was pretty confident that we will win these penalties because we had Subasic who, scored, who saved three penalties. And from my perspective as a former goalkeeper, I know how much this, mean, this means, uh, this confidence you have. Especially when you are like hero of the nation, one of the most important players at that moment. And, and, uh, and I, but all, both teams, I think they were like two boxers, you know, who were like 
uh, in the 12th round, you know, and they, they are barely standing on their feet. And, 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 and you couldn't expect anybody, you, know, you couldn't have any predictions of who will win it or not, you know, because they were so tired. And it was in Sochi, you know, it was very hot with the huge humidity. And 120 minutes we play uh, for the second time. And, but I'm telling you, Luka Modric shoots the penalty. Akinheyev has this ball on his hands. The ball from the post goes back in the, in the corner. And that is that piece of luck again, we, we, which we had especially with the, the Smolo, I think, was he a first or a second penalty taker when second. he chipped, chipped the ball, you know. And this... That's so much hate in Russia for that, yeah, I but, can't even imagine. But I, I'm saying, in, in this kind of game, which I was saying now, in this environment, when you have the penalty shooter who chi tries to chip the ball and he, doesn't, and he doesn't do it well, and then I think I felt it that we will, that we will win it, yeah. And then you go on to play against England with interesting history between the yeah, two footballing course. nations. Yeah. You were in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The favorite game of every Russian. You go out in the street and you ask them, yeah. they will tell you it's a favorite yeah. game. Uh, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. It's the game which Croatia played against England in England, which Croatia won 3 2, essentially meaning that Russia would qualify for the Euros in 2008 which Russia went to uh, a semi-final against Spain, which was huge. I mean, bodies in the streets were crazy. Uh, but sorry for my sentimentality here. Um, you played at that Wembley game. You saw the game against England in the World Cup. Going into that game, did you speak to the players? Uh, did you speak to anyone in the camp saying, guys, I played in the team which beat England, you can do it too? Yeah, but uh, both times, the one I played and one I watched, I felt England was scared. I played one year over there and they are usually not scared. They are very, they have really, really good mentality, you know, even in the, in the, in the youth academies, you know, and I really like that. But uh, uh, during this game I played in Wembley, of course, we were already qualified and I felt on the pitch, you know, when you see Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, David Beckham, I felt, you know, that we can harm them, you know. The, the, the morning before the game, the Slavian village, the manager, he took us to Harrods, you know, for, <laughs> for a shopping. And then, and, 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 then, and we were so relaxed, you know, so confident. And we came out of Wembley, you know, and it was new stadium at that time. They built a new stadium, you know. And it was, it was amazing feeling, you know. And what I felt when England was leading 1-0, and they came back instead of trying to push us a little bit more, go for a second or a third goal, I, I felt they were scared of, of gain, getting to the, to, to the finals. And our team is very exper experienced. They knew how to recognize things which are happening on the pitch. And, and when they feel that, they, you know, Modric, Rakitic, Brozo especially, they take the ball and they, they, they go with this ball through, through, the, through their players. And that is, I think, why we, are, why we win this game. Yeah. Actually, I do remember after Croatia beat England, I was in the mix zone and we interviewed uh, Mario Mandzukic, uh, who scored in that game as well. And I remember him saying a very, in a very passionate way in, in, uh, in Croatian that we didn't play with our feet, we played with our hearts. That's true. But do you think that going into the final, the factor which stopped Croatia from being 100% effective is the fact that they were tired, simply tired? I'm not sure because I'm telling you, I was really... Uh, happy to see how they performed during that game and the biggest strength of Croatia during all this year why are we qualifying every two years for a big competition that's why we, we are very emotionally attached with our country with our people you know and everybody knew what how we get our independence through the war and everything and this is uh, in 98 when we won the bronze medal it helped me as a young footballer to to, to get more passionate about the football and the national team and everything. That is why I think uh, this last year will also help a young player, as also my sons, to, 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 to new to, uh, this mentality playing for uh, your country. And uh, from the physical point of view, uh, when, you, when you see the final game, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy how the team performed. <laughs> Paul Pogba, having a, let's be honest, a pretty shitty season in Manchester United, he comes up to the World Cup, 
some, somewhat slow at times, somewhat inefficient, but at the final he is all fireworks. He scores the pivotal third goal. Do you think Paul Pogba's resurgence as a big, 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 big game player in the final was one of the defining factors for the overall win? You have to understand, it's not easy for a young player. And uh, today, based on what we used to do before, uh, everything has changed. Now we see players, and you know it, uh, getting paid or transfer. We, today, when we talk about Pogba, it's about this transfer. Because the money that uh, Man United has spent on him from uh, Juventus. Coutinho went to uh, Barcelona, and let's hear the price. Let's talk about the price. Then Dembele went to Barcelona, let's talk about the price. But uh, when it comes to quality players, somewhere, somehow, they're going to come up. They're going to come up. And Pogba comes out because also he has experience. On his young age, he played in Juventus the last three years before he go to, uh, to Man United. Before back, he back go to back, United. yeah. <laughs> before he go back to Man United. Playing in Juventus is not like he was on the bench. You know what I mean? So then, okay, we know it sometimes we can have a bad relationship uh, with our uh, coach and everything. But still, the national team is something which is like very, very important. Uh, because it's like you're saying, for you guys from uh, Croatia, it's, 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 it's the same for everyone. When it comes to national team, you don't go just like, you go with the heart, you know what I mean? Because it, it, you, you, the shirt you're wearing is the country. It, it's the nation is looking on you, you know? So this is the thing. He goes there. He come to the final, okay, a lot of criticism and everything, but he took it, he took it, and he, he showed himself, listen, I can do it, and all the guys who was behind him, and we, you can see so many videos uh, about him talking on that final, you know, uh, before the final, he was sitting and talking in the changing room, saying, guys, this is our moment, it's not tomorrow, it's today. It can be tomorrow, but you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So let's take it today. And he showed it. it and he showed, he showed that he is a quality player. Of course, you know, national team and clubs, anything, uh, it's always different. How many players that we saw uh, doing great in the club and not, doing, not performing well in the national team or the vice versa? So, you know, and I think he did a great job. Like the, like the, the, the French national team did a great job. Let's talk about the right defender and the left defender, which is like Pavar and Hernandez, right? Mm -hmm. Normally, they are not supposed to play this World Cup. It was supposed to be Mendy on the left side, who played Manchester City, and City Bay from Monaco. Mm -hmm. Both of them get injured, but the coach took them with the national team and bring them to the, during the World Cup. Mendy, I think he had played maybe a few games, a few minutes. minutes. City Bay never played. At the end, you know, things happen, things happen. Nobody knows about uh, Pavar before the World Cup. Yeah. Did you know about him? I did, no, I mean, yeah. but you, you, know, you, you have to be specifically versed in you Bundesliga. You, yes, know, so you know, you know what that. I mean? So you have to understand, even though Hernandez, you don't, you don't know what's happening with him in, uh, in Atletico Madrid. And uh, then these, these two guys, these two young guys comes in and play very well, uh, did something incredible. And like we said, Pavar against, uh, against uh, Argentina. That's, that's all about, you know, being there at that moment. Someone gives you the possibility to be there and to pay, and yeah, you take it. D don't get my question wrong, please. Do you think that France had an easy final? No, to be honest. The score line, Listen, the, the flow of the game, the, the penalty, we'll get to that. True, France get that. Afterward, they score, right? So you think that they're in that moment that they can keep going. But what makes the differences from my side, I think, is more about uh, the freshness, being uh, physically, you know, uh, I think that Croatia at the end were tired. Physically, I think that France was much fresh than uh, Croatia at the end. And now we can talk about the penalty. Do you think this was the decisive moment of the game? At that time, uh, my reaction, you know, was uh, it was not a penalty, you know, because you are very emotionally attached to the game. But, you know, when, when, I, when I looked at it, you know, uh, it reminds me on that penalty, Juventus against Real Madrid in the Champions League. You can watch that penalty hundred times, but you will never get a clear opinion, you know. That is 
what I see, how I see that penalty. Well, for me, personally, VAR, I think, is the best thing what happened to the football. And that is why we had this, I think, very good uh, uh, workup from the perspective of the penalty shootout. There was, ne any, there was not any tails after any game, I think. And so I, st I really believe in VAR. So what I don't understand, and I'm a football player, now I work on the TV. I, I, when these referees, they come and they start to explaining what is the natural position of end, what is not natural, I will never understand it. Because if you jump, you have to put your hands up in the air, you know. So we can, we can, we can, try, we can try to explain it on a hundred ways, you know, but I still think that nobody can, 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 can explain us exactly, or, or if ex explain us, that we can accept uh, that opinion, you know. I want to move away a little bit from the final and talk about your two nations, how they actually got there. And it's interesting to me to know from both of you because it's a very different story. Ibrahim, first to you. Um, France. Obviously, 1998 World Cup, 2000 Euros, right, back to back, and then 2002 World Cup, beating by Senegal in the first game, like, you know, complete collapse. So did it really take 20 years for France to completely rebuild everything, to change the system, to generate players like Kylian Mbappe, like, like Paul Pogba, like many others? What was the recipe of success in your uh, view? And in, in 98, of course, I did not participate to the World Cup, but uh, the, before the World Cup, what happened, uh, it's a team that we know, all of us, we know each other. Uh, we enjoyed it to be together. 20 years after, I think friends had players before, but players from 2018 was much like guys who wanted to be together, like in 98. So that's what happened. And it's also young players who know each other because they, 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 they play together. And it happened, in, in 98, it was the same thing. You know, sometimes we say, yeah, big team, they win because they are strong. They are strong because they like to stay together. That, uh, that's, that's me, uh, my experiences from, uh, as, as a football player. And that's also where I, I, I have been. Every time I got a result with my, uh, with my colleagues or with my teams, because we had a good relationship, uh, going out together, at dinner together, doing things together. And that, like for me, yeah, that's for me, that is the most important thing when we come, uh, when we come to football. Uh, otherwise, we go to play tennis, and this is what we do. You know, it's like you are by your own and you do your own things. You know what I mean? And I think. As a football player, you, you you want to test that. You want to you know be able to to spend time with your your your, your teammate to know each other and to trust each other. I also um, uh, witnessed a little change in '98 and 2018. We interviewed Patrick Vieira, uh, but like two years ago, and he told us in 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 great detail about the whole media pressure on his team in '98. Uh, he obviously came out in the final and assisted a goal to Manel Piti, a you know, great player, fantastic career at Arsenal and all that. Um, but he said basically everybody in France were writing the team off. Like, you'll never win anything, and it's a domestic World Cup. Then we have obviously Euro 2016, France at home again, makes to the finals, capitulates against Portugal. And then the whole spin of media starts again. The team is worthless, they're not going to do anything. But before the World Cup, I went through the French press. And they were, yeah, yeah, we, we can do it, we can do it, yeah, I mean, these guys are good, these guys are strong. Some tried to criticize, you know, the team selection because you could actually form a separate French team from the players who were left behind, and this team would still be in the running for the World Cup. Do you think that was a big difference? If you look on that team in 98, most of the players was playing outside of the country, France. All of them. All, 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 all of them. From the goalkeeper to the, we have like maybe two guys who were playing in uh, in France, but the rest of it was like uh, everywhere. Key was like you take you know something from England, you take something from Italy, you take something from Spain, and you bring it to the national team. This is what make it. Uh, that's why uh, France, I think, for me personally, make it made it because uh, we was all of us you know uh, nobody believed in us. And this in in 2018, 
same, more or less. Most of the players playing outside of the country. Big team, uh, we said Man, uh, Man United, Barcelona, and Paris Saint-Germain when we come to Mbappé. But then you have the coach from 98. So I guess... But we know. had you. Yeah. We had them. <laughs> <laughs> we had them in the 60th uh, yeah. something minute when we scored. True. I thought it's end. And then to Ram, I think there are only two goals of his <laughs> career he scored. Yeah, true. Yeah, true is true, it true? Yeah. True, true, yeah. true, yeah. true, true. But uh, you know, th this is the thing because I remember in '98, um, nobody thought that uh, France would beat uh, Brazil uh, with Ronaldo at the time. You know what I mean? Time, so yeah. uh, this is the thing. And yeah. like you said, you know, Croatia against uh, against France, a defender like Pavar. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. So he scored those goals. Nobody analogy. think, you and know. The second one, I think it was with the left foot. Yeah, yeah, left foot. Left foot. Yeah, yeah, he gets in and, he, yeah. you know, so this is the thing. So. Yeah, <laughs> luck is definitely the factor. <laughs> now let's uh, traverse to Croatia. Obviously, the generation 98, the greats, the Davor Shukar and, and, and the rest of the gang. You've always had this very strong team which could create problems for just about everyone. Euros in Ukraine and, and uh, Poland, uh, you played there. Yeah. At the same time, Stephen, I'm really interested to hear about that. Let's be honest, things in football in Croatia are far from perfect. Yeah, that's right. And interestingly so, it's the country which got to the World Cup final. How? How a team with no stadium, no national stadium per se, got to the final? That is what I was explaining before the World Cup. You know what we kept? We kept street football. The kids are still playing street football outside on the streets. Okay, not like uh, before, but now they are still doing that, you know. And, and you, I'm, I'm also, I live in Split, it's 200,000 people living in the Split. Uh, uh, you have like, I think, around a big club, Hajduk, and you have like maybe 20 small football schools, around 100 kids, you know, training three times a week. You have like, uh, uh, city league, you know, you play every weekend, and that is what we kept. And that is how you become a football player, I think, yeah, yeah, from the street. You know, you, when you start to play one, two, these games, dummies, you learn it on the street. But not only football, you play basketball, you play tennis, you have sea, you swim, and that is how we get talented players, you know. And these talented players, when they get this inspirational moments like I had 98 or these guys gave them in 2018 and that is what keeps you going for working more and more and more especially now what we have really good coaches young ex-players like you have Niko Kovac in, in, in uh, Bayern Munich we had recently Ivan Juric in Genoa Tudor in, in Galatasaray Flamin Bilic who was coaching Besiktas you have this yeah uh, and you have these young coaches who are very good with these social skills, but we don't have a proper stadium, which is a shame, you know, uh, because you have money from these um, different resources from FIFA, UEFA programs. And, and that is what we hope that the Football Federation will start to do. You know, they built now the pitches for every Premier League team, so at least you have a nice pitch, you know, with heating and everything. What I would like that they start to do more uh, in investing in these football schools, that they help them with the money they get from the, from the World Cup, you know, from everything. So that is what, what I see we can progress much more than the problems we were saying about. Yeah. Take the example of Iceland, for instance. Every, every school in the country has an AstroTurf. Yeah. And that's why their team now in, in the World Cup and, and the Euros before, they're making such a great progress. That's what I'm saying. But It's a small country. With, with the system and the passion we have, I, I, I'm sure that we can... We can and it's, it's hard to say that we will win the World Cup maybe in the next 20 years, but I think we can always uh, perform a really, really good football and also uh, really good young players. Yeah. But do you think the money that you just mentioned went from the World Cup, the investment, do you think it will actually reach football? Because what I've heard, and I, I can't you know, pretend to be an expert in that field, that there is a systematic problems in that respect in Croatia. Yeah, Corruption, the yeah. money stays somewhere else but football. Uh, unfortunately, in uh, Croatia, you cannot do, change anything without politics. And uh, in, inside of federation, you have from, I think, 17 people, I think, uh, at least 12 of them are directly involved inside of politics, you know, but they are not football people. 
I think the football people are, are uh, I'm, I'm, I won't say it's me, but I think it should be. But you ex, are. Yeah, but it should be ex-player who have this uh, dim dimension to recognize these things, you know, and that they should be involved. But then you are not inside of the system, you know, you are outside of system. And then, of course, that they don't want you be close there, you know, because you don't have any, 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 any personal interest in that. You have just a public interest, which is most important thing to develop uh, uh, football or to build the, the, the proper system for the, for the young players and for the people. Yeah. Well, French system doesn't have a problem in that. No, 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 because uh, I was lucky because, like I said, you know, I came to France, it was in 82. So uh, going to school, but the, at that time, you couldn't do sport at the school everywhere. I do remember, for me personally, to be able to, you know, I was like playing in the street. Uh, down from the, the building, all my friends was like down. So we finished school, that's what we do. Okay, we are like, uh, let's go down in the street. Cars was passing by, you know, and we play like 5v5, 2v2, uh, and it was the thing. Kids today, you know, you want the security about your kids. You want the safety of their, your kids. You don't want to be, you don't want to see them in the street or whatever, because you know, dangers is there, uh, gangs and every other thing. So kids play less outside now. They play more yeah, inside with PlayStation yeah, and every other things, you know. So also that's, that's the difference is because from where we come from, we did not have that. Yeah, yeah. We did not have that gaming, all the stuff. We were like outside all the time. My son, my son has now in his home, he had the birthday, ninth birthday, seven days ago, but he had like uh, 10 balls inside of his home. I had yeah. no, yeah, no me, whole, in whole street, you have we like won. 20 kids, they had two balls, you know, and we were like, oh, in front of building, waiting, this bring guy it, with the ball, when he will come it. down <laughs> and with the ball, True. you know, yeah. so it's a big difference, but uh, you, you learn to, through this street, you learn how to fight, you know, to, how to create yourself as a person and, and, and it was beautiful, you know, and I think it was, it was harder for us, but I think it was more beautiful, romantic. more, more romantic, you know, normal, more, like more, more, like a normal life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, also, you know, being parents, yeah. things change. You don't want to see, you don't want to think about my, oh, listen, where's my son? Yeah. With who is outside, you know, this it's is It's easier normal, and harder you know? at the same yeah. time, you know. Easier in yeah, some yeah, things yeah. and harder, harder in others. Yeah. Like, I can't strip my kid away from PlayStation. He's seven years old and he just like likes, likes to PlayStation. I was like, dude, you're gonna be living in this virtual reality. You need to come back to the real life. At least he now knows the names of all big major football players. Uh, he still can't decide who is his favorite goalkeeper, though. Uh, I can fear for Schmeichel. Okay. Once he said Kasper, I can fear for okay. Maybe laugh. That was, it, was, it was great stuff. You both played in England. I know you're very disappointed about your time in England. You said it. I was years. because I wasn't playing. I played only one Carling Cup game against Arsenal. It was it was a very bad result. Four one again. We lost. It was our biggest rivals. But uh, I remember that time when Ibrahim was saying about the group. The group was fantastic. It was me. Modric, Kranchar and Chorluka, there were four of us from Croatia and they said we had inside of the team uh, uh, Peter Crouch, David Bentley, uh, uh, Jonathan Woodgate, a fantastic guys, you know, German Genus uh, and we are a fantastic group, uh, Ledley King, fantastic group of players and I love it. I played only one game and, and that was uh, during my whole career. I, was, I always was number one in Croatia, here in Russia, you know, and, and, and that year I wasn't playing, but I was so happy. And then Harry once took us to the trip to Dubai, you know, for seven days. And I really, really loved that time, that period over there, even though I, I, I wasn't uh, uh, playing, yeah. Are you still following Spurs? Yeah, of course, of Do course. Do you think they have I, a chance of winning the league? I'm not sure what's happening with them, because yeah. when you don't spend... This is the first club, I think, in the history of Premier League, they didn't spend a single penny in two uh, transfer windows. But of course, um, uh, to sign new contracts with Harry Kane, with Dele Ali, it also costs, you know, I think it's, it's a good politics and also they built a new stadium which we are waiting, you know, soon to be open. But uh, I like them, of course, I cheer for them, you know, and I'm still in the contact with the team manager who is a really fantastic guy and uh, I like Spurs a lot. Yeah. You think that they are overachieving considering what they have? Not spending money in the transfer window. Yeah, they have fantastic manager. I think he, he built a completely new club, you know. And even though I really like 
Harry Redknapp, you know, and I still, uh, Pochettino is a, is, is a guy who improves, I think, every year in the matter of tactics and in the matter of the social skills. I see that players really like to play for the manager and that is in England one of the most important things. When you lose the, 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 the team, then you are, I think, done. I think that in the next couple of years when this team, uh, young team, they get more experience to play whole season on, on a high level, they can, they can do something big, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ibrahim, I know that uh, you have uh, Rossonieri in your heart all over. Um, you played for Bolton Wanderers, obviously, the club which used to be really, really solid, but now is in somewhat of a decline. Do you follow them? Yeah, I do. I do follow the, the English football. When I came to, 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 to Bolton in 2002, 2003, uh, my contract ended with Milan, so uh, Sam Mallardais gave me the possibility to come for Bolton. And there I find quality players, Jorkaev, uh, Okocha, JJ, just, just to oh, say, you know what I mean? So we, with that, that team, we went to the Carling Cup final. We lost against uh, Middlesbrough. Yeah. But uh, even though I did not play so much uh, in the Premier League, but I really enjoyed it because, you know, um, when you're in Italy, uh, every game you have to go one day earlier to the hotel to get rare sentences. You're coming to England. When they say to you, you know, the game is at 3 o'clock, uh, meeting a changing room at 1. Excuse me? What What you say? It was something like, like I was, like I was shocked because I never, I never thought that it was possible. You know what I mean? Uh, thinking like the game is going to be against Arsenal, against Tottenham, against Man United. You don't care. 3, you come at 1, 1.15 in the changing room. Hello. And you come inside and you hear like the music, you know it. The music is like, you're like, oh, where am I? I'm in the, in the club, what? Because that's what he was. And then, coach comes, he says some, he go to the, uh, to the field, you know, before the game, uh, 30 minutes warm up and everything. Everybody's focused on what they are doing. Then game start, like 90 minutes, 95 minutes, like high tempo, the game finish, music, Again, on is like seriously. I was like, I was like, this is heaven. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And uh, for that situation, for that moment, I really enjoyed England. That is, I think, the only country where coach doesn't need to uh, lose a single second to motivate yeah. the team. When they come off the pitch, they are like all over the pitch for 100 minutes. They always give 100%, and that is the mentality. You know why, why I like most the, the the England league is the, that kind, because of that mentality. I think when they step out on the pitch, they put all the problems on the side. Yeah. I'll be trying to, to do this every time I do the show. Uh, a prediction, a, a long-standing prediction: Champions League this season. I know it's a tough one. Who do you think is going to win it? Uh, I'm putting my bets on Man City. I think if we, from the beginning, if we were just sitting and talking about it, I would say uh, Juventus. I, would, I wouldn't yeah. say Juventus. But right now, after I've been watching all the games, uh, I think I'm not so sure, but I think uh, it can be maybe one of those three teams from uh, Spain.